Hey everyone, it's so good to be back here with you. It's been so long since I did a soap recipe video, so I'm really keen to share this one with you today. If you're interested in hearing a little bit of an update video from me, I shared one just recently that I filmed this morning, but I'll share it before I share this one. So head back and have a look at that if you're interested in a little bit of an update on what I've been up to and all the news. But anyway, today I really want to share this recipe. This is my recipe for shaving soap. Now, this recipe is based on somebody else's recipe. I got the idea for this and actually most of the ingredients um, ideas from Veronica Foll. She shared this recipe on modernsoapmaking.com. Veronica is an Australian soap maker in Tasmania. She's very experienced. I remember reading about her soap making recipes um, in various places when I first was learning how to make soap myself. So she's been doing it for a long time. This recipe is based on her shaving soap recipe. I've just tweaked it a little bit to make it a little bit easier for my purposes, but it's an excellent recipe. The difference between this one and Veronica's is that she uses dual lye in her shaving soap recipe. So she uses potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide, whereas I'm just making a sodium hydroxide soap with this, just made it easier for me. Um, and it still is a great soap. Veronica also uses a hot process version, whereas I use a cold process version. I find the cold process version pretty easy. It's nice and easy to pour and with a few tweaks, um, like I don't use a stick blender, I just mix it by hand with a whisk. Um, yeah, it's, it's really easy to make. The key ingredient to this soap recipe is actually soy wax. So I use um, golden wax 464. So this is hydrogenated soy oil or soy wax that is used in candle making. And this one doesn't have any nasty additives or anything. It's fine to use in soap. Um, but soy wax is really high in stearic acid, which is what makes this soap have such an amazing lather and it makes it really unique and perfect for shaving. It's got that long lasting, really tight, close little kind of creamy lather, which we want in a shaving soap. This recipe also has coconut oil, cocoa butter and castor oil. So you'll need those ingredients. I also add bentonite clay, which adds a bit more slip to the soap and it's a lovely natural ingredient. And I fragrance this soap with a combination of rosemary and cedar essential oils, which is a really nice combination that seems to have quite a wide appeal. I make this soap in muffin, silicon muffin molds, uh, because it's a very hard soap. It sets up very quickly and it's very hard to cut. So it's much better if you can pour it into individual molds and then you can pop them out and that works really well. It's also a good size and shape to put in a little bowl for shaving or a cup or whatever it is. So I'll share the link to Veronica's original recipe uh, in the description box below the video and also the link to my recipe, this one that I'm going to make today. And without further ado, let's make the soap. So I start off this recipe by weighing out my fats and my oils into a container to make the soap in. So that was the soy wax, 340 grams. I follow that with coconut oil, 204 grams. Um, all of the recipe details for this are on my website. I'll put a link to that full recipe below. Um, then I put in cocoa butter, 68 grams. Um, yeah, so you don't have to worry about writing anything down. It's all on my website. And finally, castor oil, also 68 grams. So there's just the four fats that go into this soap. Once they're all in, I just melt that in the microwave. If you don't have or don't want to use a microwave, that's okay. You can melt it just really gently on the stovetop as well. I just find the microwave really easy. I can melt it and make it all in the same um, bowl or jug or whatever I'm using. As long as it's polypropylene plastic, number five plastic, it's fine. So I'm just stirring it halfway through. It took about two minutes in my microwave. Um, and there it is at the end. There's still a few little solid bits, but they melt really easily once the overall temperature is up high enough. You can see there it's about 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit, and that's perfect because that's hotter than we need, 
but um, by the time I go to make the soap um, it'll be it'll come down to the temperature we're looking for which is about 45 Celsius next I make my lye solution so I'm using 237 grams of cold water and make sure you've got your safety gear on when you do this and please make sure you understand everything about soap making safety before you attempt any soap recipe I have links to all that information below that was my sodium hydroxide going in 94 grams and now I gently add my sodium hydroxide into my water stir it through slowly and that will dissolve to make my lye solution this does get hot and I'm using cold water from the fridge but it's not cold enough to really stop all the fumes so make sure you're wearing a mask um, or you're doing it in a really well ventilated area it does generate heat too so I put a little um, cork mat underneath just to stop my plastic um, bench cover from getting warped from the heat so I just set that aside somewhere really safe while you get everything else ready also into this recipe goes bentonite clay 20 grams which is about 3% of the total oil amount and that's a really nice amount to use and I also get my essential oils ready I'm using 10 grams each of rosemary and cedar which is really nice but you can leave this fragrance free as well if you want to there's no requirement to add any fragrant fra <laughs> fragrance <laughs> to your shaving soap I also get my molds ready at this point because this soap sets up pretty fast and you want to have everything ready you don't want to be fiddling around getting your molds out you want to have everything absolutely ready to go before you start um, because sometimes they move a bit faster than others depending on the temperature you can see now it's about 47 degrees Celsius which is great 116 Fahrenheit that's just fine you know that you could wait till it got a little bit cooler but by the time I mix my clay in and everything and get ready it will have come down to about 45 which is a good temperature to make this soap because the melting temperature of the soy wax is 45 you wouldn't want to let it get too much cooler than that so I put my clay in and really thoroughly whisk that through I'm not going to use a stick blender for this recipe it's brilliant you don't need one you just whisk it and it it um, traces really easily by itself with a whisk and that's thanks to all the stearic acid in the soy wax I also put my essential oils in now before I mix the the soap just mix those into the oils and that way everything's all in there it's ready to go all you need to do is add the lye solution then and pour the soap so get your molds ready and when you're ready I didn't even take the temperature of the um, lye solution it was just still fairly warm but I knew it wasn't going to be a problem I've made this soap so many times before um, so yeah pour your lye solution in and you can see it starting to kind of emulsify straight away see that color change I just whisk it through it doesn't take long at all um, probably under a minute to reach a trace and I like to pour this at quite a light trace you definitely want it to be thoroughly emulsified and tracing just to make sure it's really really well mixed given that you're not using a stick blender so I just whisk it really really well until I get a trace and then I pour it straight away you can see with my silicon molds I've got these little pieces of core flute it's like election sign plastic stuff I always put something rigid underneath my silicon molds like that because once they're filled with soap they're impossible to lift up unless you've got something solid under them so that's a really good tip too and I just pour it into the molds this is the easiest soap to make as long as you can get the soy wax it's pretty easy and it just makes the best lathery soap it's unreal so just pour that in I like to pour mine just before they reach the top I find I get a really nice perfect finish if I do that and this recipe is the perfect size to fit exactly 12 of these muffins and these are Wiltshire silicon muffin molds you can get them in Australia I'll also put a link to that in the recipe on my website um, I'm just spraying the top with some alcohol it's just some isopropanol um, alcohol and that's just to help prevent soda ash this recipe will ash up pretty strongly 
if you if you um, leave it uncovered and you don't spray it. So I like to spray it with alcohol. Actually, this is the first time I tried it, but it worked really well. Spray it with alcohol and then um, cover them up and just leave them on their own for like 18, 24 hours and they set up beautifully with, with no soda ash that way. So I put them in my cooler, which is just an insulated cooler, but you don't have to do that. You could just put them anywhere on a table or on the floor and just cover them with a bit of a blanket. I think the insulation does help a bit and I just leave them there. So just put them in there and forget about it. You know, you could leave them there for a couple of days. It really wouldn't matter. And that's it. Hey everyone. Well, it's 9.30 a.m. the next day. I made this soap about, I don't know, around lunchtime yesterday and it turned out perfect. I am so happy with it. I'm really glad I did the alcohol spray because I got no soda ash on this, on this batch and I did get a bit of ash last time. I'm just gonna do a quick little pH test on one of these bars just to see where we're at. It may not be fully saponified yet, I'm not sure. Sometimes it takes a couple of days. Ooh, that's green. Okay, we have got saponified soap. So when the pH has um, come down to about eight or nine and your pa paper like goes green like that, um, that means it's safe to test. But like any other soap, this will benefit from a cure. So I will cure this for about, probably about a month would be enough. Just gonna dry that off. And yeah, so I'll cure it for about a month just to make it nice and hard and extra gentle. I will pop it out of the molds now and see what they're like on the other side. Wow. Oh, perfect. I love the nice pale creamy color. So if you put too much clay in, you get a darker color, but that's all right. You can probably add a bit more clay if you want. I think I added 3% clay of the oil weight. You can hear the train in the background. The train gets in a lot of my videos. There's not much I can do about it. So I've learned to just go with it. <laughs> These are great. Oh my gosh, my friends are gonna love me for this. I get requests for this soap all the time. Um, I just give it to my friends or sell it to them just for a few dollars each, just to cover my costs. Um, it's not something I do commercially, but this is a great shaving soap. Oops, uh-oh, damaged that one. You can see it's still a bit soft. Okay, so there is our 12 bars of beautiful bentonite clay shaving soap. We'll give it a little lather test. I've got my husband Jim's shaving brush from the bathroom. I might put this bar that's a little bit damaged. This is how we do it, or Jim does it. You just put the um, bar, obviously you want to cure this first. I'm just doing this to show you how it works. So just wet your shaving brush a bit. Obviously, if you're shaving other parts of your body, you would just, you know, rub the soap, you know, on your legs or wherever. And then just lather away. After a while, just take this out to make it quicker. Woo, check that out. Um, after a while, once you use it a couple of times, the, the soap bar sticks in the bowl and you don't have to worry about it slipping and sliding around. Um, arr, try and get this lather to come up. There we go. There's the lather. It's obviously, you know, the more you lather it up, the more you can get it to lather. But this soap has a lather like no other of my soap recipes and it's that soy wax that does it. So there you go, there's the lather. Um, I'm not very experienced with a shaving brush, 
So um, my example's not that great, but I hope you get the idea. There we go. It's pretty good. It's a nice tight foam and I've probably used a bit too much water. And it does last a while, so um, my friends who've used this and their husbands, you know, and they're shaving their faces, uh, it lasts quite well. So it stays on the face and you can just shave away and it's pretty gentle, it's not too drying. There you go, shaving soap. I made a bit of a mess here. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. So you can see this soap has got a really, really good lather. It is perfect for shaving and everybody I've ever made this for raves about it. Um, I'll put some links in the description box about the soy wax, the specific type it is. Um, this is the little cup that, or the little bowl that Jim puts his shaving soap in. And like I said, once you've used this a couple of times, you just put a little bit of water on the brush and then, and then <laughs> uh, swirl it around. And after one or two uses, the soap don't don't make you know don't leave it too wet in the bottom there but an, a little bit of moisture will fall naturally fall to the bottom and the soap will stick to the bottom of the bowl or the cup or whatever you use and it will stay in there and then as you wear it down it will kind of just become part of the bowl so you have your little shaving bowl works brilliantly anyway thanks everyone i hope you enjoyed that and found that interesting i've been wanting to share that one for yonks Thanks for watching everyone. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.